Do you ever do things on your homestead just to get them done because you've got so many other things to do? Yeah, me too. Well, I did something up here and we recently did a video on it. And I know it's very helpful for y'all, but I forgot to do a couple things. And that is with the rainwater tank. I'll show you what I forgot. And I'm gonna have to let out every single drop of water that I've collected so far. Now I didn't do this job half-heartedly or half, you know what, everything works that I installed, but I forgot to install a few things. And so I've got my overflow and I've got the inlet. All of it works perfectly. The tank after two rain events is already full. So I actually forgot two things. Well, I didn't necessarily forget the other one. I purposefully didn't put it there, but this one I did forget. So you can see down here at the bottom of the tank, this is the bulkhead for connecting to another tank, which we will be getting hopefully in the near future. Well, what's missing? If we're gonna transfer water to one tank to the other and not lose all the water that's in the tank, we need some sort of valve and connection that we can plumb to another tank and I forgot to put it in. And what made me think of doing this was I was looking at the cap down here or the plug and it's leaking. So the bulkhead that came on the tank from the factory is leaking. So I'm gonna have to seal it with some pipe dope and maybe also tighten and seal around our bulkhead fitting because it seems to leak at a pretty high rate and that's just not gonna cut it. So what else don't I have? Here on the backside, I do not have any sort of supply. I have the collection. I can fill the tank from the roof, no problem, already full, but I don't have any way to supply it to the garden or to the house or wherever I'm gonna run it in the future. Now, I did think about that and I needed a pump on my property and I couldn't afford the pump at the time that I did all this. It was just too much for us to, uh, to handle. But since I decided not to buy the pump, I also didn't plumb in a bulkhead for the supply on this side because I'm gonna put the pump here under the cover of the, uh, the shop on this side of the barn. And I should have plumbed that in with a valve on it as well. <laughs> I didn't even think about it because I didn't buy the pump I didn't plumb it in. Now, two reasons I have to let everything out of the tank. Now I'm gonna let the water out of it. And where's that water gonna go? All 2,500 gallons of it, right down past the chickens. And I hope it doesn't just wash out everything from the chicken coop. Although they can sit up on the roosting bars and it will drain down our grade. You know, we've got a 10 foot drop here from this portion of the barn down to the house. It will drain down there not super fast, but it will get away from them. So they'll be fine, but I, I have to let the water out past them. It's, it's not going to be fun. And it's not going to be fun getting that plug out of there either with all that water weight above it. It's going to shoot that plug out. Hopefully I can find it and hang on to it with a pair of channel locks. Oh, well, here it goes. And while the water's out, I need to tighten that bulkhead fitting just to be safe and prudent for the future. Well, it's really interesting. It's not until you have a big water event that you really understand where the water travels on your property. This is cool because it gives me an indication of how things are flowing up here near the tank. And it's not going where I thought it was gonna go. I thought it was gonna run down the side past our compost piles here and then kind of fall toward the chicken coop, but it's not. It's actually running in front of me right here and going kind of in front of the chicken coop and down toward the garden that way. I also just realized that it's actually sitting here next to the tank. So that means there's a slight slope back toward the tank. And I'm gonna be sitting in some water when I put on this, uh, this valve right here. So I did a video recently about becoming an expert in everything that you're doing. 
And the only way to become an expert is to learn. And I also did a video on failing and that failure is the best way to learn because there's gonna be a point pretty soon where uh, things are gonna get pretty bad in this country and for certain people, uh, all earthly or worldly things are going to be cut off from them and help is gonna be cut off from them. So it's best to learn now, fail at things like this and learn what you did wrong because that's what builds knowledge quickly. Well, it looks like most of the water is being diverted around this depression that my dog has worn around our chicken coop from his crazy herding uh, instincts. <laughs> and it's flowing down around the coop. That's pretty hilarious. So when you're putting in one of these tanks, I would recommend that you get everything before you install it. Get everything set up, at least plumb in on the sides of the tanks with the, your bulkheads, um, your relief valve and or your transfer valve and also your supply valve because you can see we're wasting 2,500 gallons of water and that's what we would use in a typical month, between 2,500 and 3,000 gallons. So we wasted about a month's water here. Uh, for the house, the garden's a little different. Luckily, we are still on our well in the community well, and we're not relying on this solely right now. Now that we have our water almost all drained out of there, it's still just going. I don't know when it's gonna stop. I did unscrew the big nut that's on the outside of the bulkhead. Now remember, your bulkheads will come from the inside, the seal is on the inside, and the nut goes on the outside of the tank. Something you can do to help with any potential leaks around there is actually put some silicone, and I've got this right here, this is great stuff. You put some silicone just underneath the nut, and that's just your, temp or your secondary seal. The seal inside is the most important, and that seal should be working. But if it's not, you maybe just want a little bit of backup. So we've unscrewed it. Now, I don't have a pair of channel locks, uh, that is that big that is huge and unless I wanted to buy and get another tool What I found I could use pretty easy. It's one of these quick clamps. I just smash it on there and start turning worked perfect Now we're gonna put a fitting into the bulkhead and that is a two inch They're normally two inch down below like that and so we've got a two inch to one and a half inch adapter and then a one and a half inch slip and we are going to use pipe thread sealant love this stuff or pipe dope uh, it seals everything up really well all right now i'm going to put the ball valve on and this one and a half inch pipe and we now have an ability to let the water out as we need it and connect it to another tank, so on and so forth. We've got options because it's threaded in on that side too. So don't forget to skip this step like I did in setting up your rainwater tank. It's gonna fill up again. I might leave the ball valve open so it drains out because I'm gonna to have to put that other bulkhead fitting in the other side. And I don't have one right now because they're extremely hard to find. Now I am off to find that other bulkhead for the other side so I can hook in a line on the other side for the supply, for the pump. And I need to get that pump. We're saving some money right now for that pump. So it might be a little bit, but I better get that bulkhead in there first, not make the same mistake like I did here. So learn from my mistakes, learn from my experience. And you will make mistakes yourself, but you will learn from them and that's a good thing. And when you're putting in your rain tank, don't forget all your fittings on the bottom because if I was in the desert and just had to waste 2,500 gallons of water, I wouldn't be very happy. All right, have a great day. We love you. We'll see you next time. Bye.